Conrad, I made some ribs this last weekend, and I understand maybe you also made ribs. I made ribs. You got. I think you have to end out the summer season with ribs, right? Or, or some barbecue just to pretend the kids are back in school, but you're just elongating the summer just a little bit better. You know, the other cool thing that I did, this is a, my, my favorite, uh, not that this is a parenting show, but I, I also bought, which is amazing, shockingly inexpensive, a blow-up projector screen to do movies outside. So as the days have gotten shorter, we're now showing movies outside for the uh, the neighborhood kids. And so we have a bunch of kids coming over every Saturday night to watch movies with ribs. Charging admission? <laughs> as far as you know, the admission is just a love and adoration of their parents for me taking very, kids off your nice. hand on a Saturday night. Very nice. Yeah. No, but it's it's a really fun way to to so I wanted something covid safe that we could do outside with a bunch of bunch of friends back to school and so it's been a good little community gathering that we've been able to create. What movie did you play? Uh, we're going to play Napoleon Dynamite next weekend, uh, which my, none of my kids know about, so I'm excited about that. Uh, but we watched Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which okay. bluntly, I was never a comics guy, and I, I, I'm I, guessing I didn't get 90% of the movie. I was not also a, cooking ribs. Not a raving review from Conrad. No, no. The, everyone loved it, except I. maybe it was... I don't know. I don't know. Everyone loved it, well, but I was busy cooking ribs so what else are we going to talk about today besides spider oh boy we have this is actually going to be pretty jam-packed we we typically try and jump through the news quickly there's a lot of news coming out of the holiday weekend so there's a lot to catch up on and we're going to dig a little bit deeper into some of those news items and the next thing for our first segment i'm really excited to talk about this this is the dangers of chasing the shiny new toys for your marketing Right and, and the importance of actually experimenting with the shiny new toys. And then speaking of shiny new things, uh, we're going to end up talking about Google's poorly named out-of-home advertising product that they just talked about uh, this week. Before that, we're going to listen to some tunes. Welcome to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, teaching you how to promote, market, and make fat stacks for your legal practice, here on Legal Talk Network. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. We hope you all had a wonderful Labor Day weekend as we're recording uh, just after Labor Day. It's great to be back here with you. Conrad, let's dive into this giant pile of news. I wasn't sure how you're going to end that sentence. Giant pile of news. Um, so the big thing that we were talking about last time that I still think is interesting is the Google Helpful Content Algorithm. Uh, my experience with our clients, I suspect you are, are seeing the same, is a bit of a yawner in terms of any changes. Is that, is that accurate for you? Yes. It's, not, it's a big to-do about nothing. Um, you know, I don't want to turn this into a negative rant, but this no, is no, what no. the SEO industry does. This is what the SEO industry does. Google, by the way, Google's doing this too. They know exactly what they're doing as well. So Google has this fancy algorithm, all this stuff going on to try to sort through the mess that the web is. And Google, you know, the actual search engineers, they make updates to the algorithm and to make the results better, you know? Um, what better is, we'll let the search engineers decide, or now the AI decide. But I digress. Google announces, hey, we made an update. Uh, if you have unhelpful content on your site, this classifier might make it not rank as well. And of course, the SEO industry, because this is how they make their money, goes out and says, oh, new update from Google. You better hire us to fix it. Your contents, everything's broken. Everything's bad. Your site's going to disappear from search results. You better hire us. Uh, and then, with some exceptions, with some notable exceptions, not much happens. And so, and guess what? The stuff that when it does happen, it happens on ginormous websites, not small law firm websites, in, in not the local pack. Right, it's your. It might be like your old blog posts or your, you know, your keyword stuff. This or the million plurals, like that's unhelpful. Maybe some of that gets filtered. Um, but to your point, Conrad, 
We haven't seen a ton. Most major people who spend their days staring at Search Console and Google Analytics haven't seen a ton. They did some, I think Barry Schwartz at uh, Roundtable did a survey and said about 20% of people saw something happen. Um, and it's still rolling out. So, you know, it's still too early to even talk about this. But what is the helpful content update, Conrad? Well, so uh, very quickly, it is a site wide adjustment. <laughs> based on how much what Google considers helpful content. And they're calling it helpful content to make it sound innocuous. And they're not calling it a penalty specifically to make it not sound, to, to make it sound innocuous. Um, the interesting thing for me is that they talked about this so much. They named it ahead of time. And I, I'm going to give a counterpoint to the nothing's happening, a counterpoint perspective on this. Because I actually... Everything, all of the signals suggest that this will be a big deal. The last time when Panda rolled out, it hit something like 22% of the web. Um, if you have a massive site, and because it's site-wide, this is important. If you have a very large volume of pages on your website, and a lot of them are garbage, uh, it will actually have a negative impact on your good content. Right, and that's what it means by site-wide algo update. There is a great post. Joy Hawkins brought this to my attention this morning. It's a great post by Marie Haynes. Uh, and what she writes about is her expectation that this, even though nothing really big is going on right now, she says the last time there was a major rollout, the changes happened at the end of the rollout. So the variability in search results didn't happen until the very end of the rollout. And her, her hypothesis is that it's going to happen again. I think that is highly possible. Um, but we'll see. Right, like uh, she could be wrong. This is just a, kind of her theoretical perspective. I tend to agree with her because Google has made such a big deal of it, which is out of the ordinary for how they typically operate. All right. So let's say let's say you and uh, Dr. Haynes are right. Then what would you do? What do you do? What are you telling yes, small great. law firm website clients to do to their websites to don't prepare do prepare for anything. the great, great helpful content update. Don't do anything. Henny Penny, the sky's not falling. Uh, and we don't know if it's falling until you've got at least two weeks of data post-update. So you need to sit tight and strap in and watch the data, right? So none of this, like uh, Guy and Conrad prognosticating and disagreeing over this, who cares? None of it matters. Um, what really matters is how your traffic changes, how you are converting traffic changes, if your traffic changes, right? Um, and so you need to sit and wait until you've got enough data to actually make that. And assessments. by the way, even with that data, there are hundreds of other updates going out of Google that they don't even talk about. And so try to distinguish between the helpful content update and the hundreds of other algorithm updates that might be causing the same problem. And finally, we will move on from Google <laughs> helpful content. The smaller your website traffic is, the less scientific, this is just basic statistics, but the smaller your website traffic is, the less scientific any study is going to be because you simply lack the sample size to ascertain whether or not your site is getting hit or if it's just natural variability in behavior. So Statistical significance, such a pain. You know, my... Uh, Data scarcity. I, I try not to talk about my kids too much, but my, uh, my oldest kid is taking AP stats in high school, and that makes me very happy. It's one of, I think, the best classes you could take in high school to prepare you for real life. Okay, moving on. Go. Best tip. Hey, my case, document automation and accounting. What's going on with my case, Guy? Well, the, the race to be the platform operating system universe, whatever, metaverse, if you want to go there, whatever you want to call it, for legal uh, is on. And my case is definitely in that fight. And so they've integrated their document automation and accounting, uh, you know, similar to what Clio is doing and some of these other major platforms. But, you know, they want it to be one-stop shop, right? Like run your firm. It's, a, it's your whole firm. Payments, accounting, intake, whole consumer journey right there in that app. So good to see more of this. Um, and not a surprise, right? Like people are looking, the complexity of all these different systems is difficult. So who wants to open two different systems? Yeah, zero, right? No, not me. Speaking of the my cases of the world, Clio Conference is coming up in October. We've got the uh, CRISP Summit, November 2 and 3. Um, I also noted like, like there's some crazy 
crazy, crazy people showing up at, at conferences. Obama is going at, to HubSpot's inbound. He's the keynote at HubSpot's inbound. I, I, I will confess, I did actually apply to speak at HubSpot's inbound conference, probably 90% for the slight opportunity to actually meet Barack. That would be super cool. Um, well, they got to bring Obama in because no one wants to go to conferences anymore. And so... Well, that's an Obama, interesting thing. We're go. seeing a really interesting shift in the conferences. It's those in-person conferences, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, also, Guy, you were the kiss of death for Amazon Medicine. It was canceled before our episode. We talked about it last last uh, session. Amazon Medicine. Um, we talked about whether or not that is an is a hint that Amazon might be prognosticating or thinking about or toying with the legal industry. And as soon as before, before the episode went live, they had canceled it. So, so there's an article in the Washington Post about Amazon Medicine. Kiss of death key for Amazon Medicine. Well, you know, Bezos is a big LHLM guy. And so, <laughs> you know, when he's sitting there, he just can't help himself. But uh, interestingly, the Washington Post article that we'll cite is actually talking about how they are still very keen on doing health um, so anyway, take a look, decide for yourself. I, I still think an Am you know, we know this. I mean, you worked at the company that was thinking like this uh many years ago. Yeah. But a site where you go for lawyers, right? And Amazon's a site where you go for everything. So, you know, look, they're not there yet. There's a lot to do. But even if it's not Amazon, someone's gonna be that. Someone's there it's already happening, right? Yeah. Um, the different models. So that is right. That and that's why we bring it up, because I think right. it's really important to th think well outside our typical construct of what practicing law means in order to think about what the future looks like. Um, speaking of what the future looks like, you'll be able to delete your racist tweets in Twitter now uh, by editing them. Twitter's opened up your uh, the, the editing feature, so you can erase your stupidity from the past, good or bad, geek. <laughs> <laughs> do you have do you have the edit functionality on your app? Do you even have Twitter? Are you on Twitter? I I used to be such a heavy Twitter operator, yeah, tweeter, tweeter, and I just I have found you're TikTok. honestly you're TikTok that only now. The, I oh, oh, you will find me nowhere on TikTok yet. Although I'm lurk, I'm lurk, and we're going to talk about the importance of this. The lurking on these things is really really important. Right, because there is so much to learn just by lurking. You don't have to engage, but lurking is. I we're gonna we're gonna get into the shiny shiny object thing, but um, lurking on these different platforms is important. I'm yeah. I do not have the Twitter edit functionality on my Twitter. I app. don't either, and I'm. I, I, I don't think know, they're maybe, maybe rolling it out chest. to people who say stupid things all the time. Brought yeah, to you by. I can't the even government. get a blue check, so they don't care about <laughs> me. All right, um, you said TikTok. TikTok, there, there's a lot going on. I think, let me, let me rephrase it differently. TikTok is really changing the way Google is thinking about how the next generation is finding information. There's a great TechCrunch article on this. We'll put this in the show notes. But, Guy, can you talk about how the success of TikTok and Instagram is shaping and Google's response to the success of TikTok and Instagram, but shaping the way younger generation is actually looking for information. Yeah, the short version is that people are actually going to TikTok and Amazon to find like places to eat. I think that's like the big example. But the yeah. point is, is that the users are now using social platforms more in the context of search, right? And discovery. And you know, it's funny. We, I don't know if you and I talked about it. I, I remember this conversation long ago, and Facebook was originally pushing like their search functionality, um, which right. it, it never really was a thing because no one went there to do that. But now p can, p users are. So they're going and they want to see, they'd much rather see like somebody, you know, one of their influencers or friend or somebody talking about with a video uh, about the place, the food, all that kind of stuff, the ambiance. And so Google's like, wow, we're losing searchers. To social platforms, we need to start thinking about how we can learn from TikTok and Instagram to make search results more visual and image-driven, video-driven. I think that's the gist. And and I'm going to come back to this lurking concept. Um, you should you will not get this unless you start lurking and playing in some of these different platforms because you you will see it's so real when you're there, and it's reading it on TechCrunch is nice, but actually experiencing it. Um, is is really important. They're going to talk about the you know, new new thing and how to approach that. 
You know, I got to, uh, we, you, you know, this is a show about bashing the legal profession. Usually, <laughs> the lawyer, we say about lawyers, they're, they're so slow to adopt this stuff. I got, something's changed. I don't know, something, maybe I lawyers agree. like to dance or something. But there are lawyers all over TikTok and all over Instagram. Like, it's going out of style. And I'll tell you, it's not just... Uh, agency idiots like us that are pushing them there because a lot it's of it's not them agencies can, like us the agencies don't yeah, get it they're they're these they're taking this on themselves yes um i don't you know maybe it's the performance aspect of it but someone has convinced lo- the legal profession to be on tiktok and instagram well and they're and all I mean, over this is to me this is a pure supply and demand thing if and i i did a uh i did a great uh, dean Dean Blatchford out of uh, Ottawa. He's a tax lawyer out of Ottawa. I did a great session with him the other day. And he said, I don't, he, he, he was talking about the amount of time that he puts into his charity event and, and how that is then um, kind of leverage, leveraging online to make that really, really successful. And he literally said, I don't spend money on Google ads. I do this instead. And it's so much more effective. And what's happened is it's pure supply and demand. Google ads, so expensive. Everyone's playing in that game. You've, you've got to find blue ocean strategies for that. Um, SEO, God help you if you are, are starting out, right? Um, and so people are looking for different res- resources that are going to drive business. And there is so much out there that is not... you know. And, and you and I both started as SEOs, but there's so much out there that is not SEO and Google ads. And so people are finding it. It's just, just basic economics all right let's take a break we're gonna pay some bills and when we come back we've got the legal trends report minute as well as talking more and more about the new new thing this is thematically coming across quite well in the in the the session it's almost like we planned it it's almost like it's in the show notes and now for the legal trends report minute brought to you by clio So many legal professionals see practice management software as a key area for investment. And in fact, according to the Legal Trends Report, it accounted for a moderate or large expense in 67% of survey respondents, more than any other category. And I know you you all can't see this because you're just listening to me and I'm not sharing the screen, but in the Legal Trends Report, there is a chart that talks about expenses among lawyers who are very involved in finances and The reason that I wanted to really zero in on this is that if you look at the number one category, practice management software, as it's viewed as a large expense, doesn't mean it actually is, it's just the perception of. And then you come down and you see marketing website and domain, which is an odd way of saying it, but (laughs) it is what it is. And that's a much lower perceived expense. And I don't know what to make of it. I was kind of thinking about this and in preparation, um, I just, it just strikes me. I think about practice management software and, you know, maybe it's used for different size firms, but like, that's the significant expense. That's the big, the major expense is practice management software, not marketing, not, and then in fairness, uh, Staff was up there. Associate lawyers. Were well, no, up no, there. but like, I mean, not in fairness. I'm looking at the graph that you're talking through right now, and just so I can describe this for everyone, practice management software is considered a larger, a large or moderate expense by more people than non-lawyer staff and associate lawyer staff. Right. So you're spending, and this is per, again perception. You think, you think, yeah, you think you're perception. spending more on practice management. So you're pretty annoyed about your practice management. I would much rather spend money. I would not rather see this inverted, right? Like, right. I mean, staff it, it, is staff. I get that one. Um, but I don't know. I and I don't know. Part of me thinks that maybe it just skews for the, this particular service runs. In any event, well, no, no. But the question why it skews, right? And it's this perception. Um, I, I suspect that this practice management software has done a couple of things recently. Number one, it is much more pervasive, right? Go back 10 years, Guy, and talk about how people are running their firm. I don't know what the, the percentages are, but it is, it, there, there's a much greater adoption among law firms. So it is a new expense for a lot of different people. Um, 
The other part of this is it's so integrated into the workings of the firm and it does so many things and there's so much value for it. It's expensive. It is not a small line item. And then it's typically sold out by the seat. So the bigger you are as a firm, it's it's not like you're 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 buying a, a phone line or well a phone line. It it is it it scales out to the number of users as opposed to a single piece of software. And so um it's it's not only expensive, but it, it, it does scale out to 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 the, the number of users, typically. And so I think those two things combine to make it like, wow, this is a thing that we frequently weren't spending money on in the past. And and it's it's a non-sizable line item for many people. That makes sense when you put it in that context because you know, and it's uh, they note in the trends report, um, you know, the investment in legal tech has been growing astronomically. And if you want to, if you want a loose measure of adoption rates, go look at the VC money coming into legal tech. And so I think that the, you, you kind of nailed it there, where we didn't pay for this before, and now we're paying for it. Um, and I think it's that. Uh, comparison that really, uh, but draw your own conclusions. Go download the tech report, uh, Leo Trends report, um, to learn more about these opportunities and much more for free. Download Clio's Legal Trends report at clio.com forward slash trends. That's Clio spelled C L I O. Now, Guy, we started this session off talking about the new, new thing and chasing the new, new thing. And you and I are both technology people. There's always a new, new thing coming out, right? So we, we were talking about TikTok and Instagram and the effectiveness of that, which, which seems surprising. Um, there's lots of other new, new things that kind of crash and burn, right? And so I know how I handle this for the agency. It's probably very similar to how you handle it for your agency. But but how do you think lawyers should be thinking about the new new thing? And how do you balance staying abreast of changes with technology with not going and going bananas on things that are are, are never really going to take off? Well, that you know that's part of our job, right? It's our job yeah. as the yeah. Agency experts to stay on top of this. That's, I think that's part of the value we bring to the table, but you know that's self fulfilling. You know, when we started planning for this segment, it was really it was funny because it was really bash chasing shiny objects. Like that's really how we started. But as we mm. started talking, we started. I think you made the point of how important it is is to balance the shiny object syndrome with keeping informed about what is new. And, um, anyway, I think that it's, it's a, it's a much more, uh, I think, balanced, um, construct than just like, it's so easy to be like, oh, you're silly for chasing shiny objects. No, uh, it's, I think the, the problem that we get to is the, that some of the shiny objects actually hang around, right? Not, not most of them, right? Not most of them. Those of you who were really big on meerkat a long time ago, Right, uh, those of you who were just all over Clubhouse and 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 the the mindset. Oh no! That- now now I know you've made somebody angry that's listening. You're about <laughs> to you're about to bash Clubhouse. I <laughs> oh boy. Well, we so, by the way, and I and I genuinely mean this because I would love to have the conversation. If you have found Clubhouse, if you if you still find Clubhouse effective for you from a business perspective we would love to talk to you in preparation for club for for this uh pod today i gee and i looked up clubhouse lawyers on clubhouse and i sat in on a lawyer uh clubhouse session last night that was all of the reasons why shiny objects that why we were making fun of shiny objects. It, I, I, a, I couldn't believe that that seven people were actually spending half an hour a week with the same group of inane conversations. Um, B, maybe it's just a really bad data point that I that I had here. But um, if if Clubhouse is still working for you, I, we would love to know about it. I, and where I'm going with this is, I played with Clubhouse heavily when it came out. My gut was it was going nowhere because of the way it was set up. Um, and, and I think I was right. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to have someone walk in and tell me how it is driving their immigration law firm practice, and I just don't understand. That would be amazing. We'd love to have that conversation. 
But my point is not that like, hey, I I called Clubhouse for 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 being that flash in the pan. It was I'm happy to be wrong about that, and you have to play in the game to understand whether or not this works, right? And you have to play in the TikTok game to understand whether or not it works. You have to play in the Instagram game to understand whether or not it works. It doesn't mean you have to pick the right tech. And I think that's often the case. Oh, you know, you're a, you're a great tech person because you, you saw Clubhouse coming and you thought it was amazing and you got everyone on involved. It's, it's knowing what's going to work or what's not going to work. I think that's the deal. Yeah, I guess my thing about all of this stuff is what works for some people doesn't work for everybody. And what doesn't work for a lot of people does work for a few. And so, because I think about this, and I'm sure uh, there are people that are using Clubhouse to have conversations and build connections. And maybe there's, you know, look, bottom line is this, uh, I'm, to take out, forget about the example you were in, if seven of my uh, closest uh, business advisors, referral sources, uh, you know, professional contacts were getting together on Clubhouse once a week, and we were referring business to each other and talking shop. I would, I would find that tremendously valuable. Now, does it have to be on Clubhouse? I think that's part of the question too. Is it's like uh, this? It's not about the technology, right? It's about like right. where the people are that you want to connect with. Um, I, right. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm on Facebook for that very reason. I don't want to be on Facebook, you know. And I, you know, we all have our personal preferences of like the different social media that we like, um, but. A lot of people I know, both personally and professionally, are there. Um, you know, they're not on Twitter, which I guess I tend to prefer, uh, despite all his problems. I don't know. So, but you're not you know, on MySpace, your right? I'm not on MySpace. I don't. I never. You know, I never. I we got. I'll remember this. I'll always remember this, even after I am done with all of this. We got all of these questions about how do I put Pokemon Go to work at my law firm, and I was like, yes. Are you serious? <laughs> You want to stop doing all of the other marketing activities and just have everybody all hands on deck to get the firm on Pokemon Go. I that was like a cra- I actually use that as an example of um in my link building talk, I ask people who 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 tried to get into the Pokemon Go game and then I and and then I'll have people in the audience stand up and then I'll ask them to 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 stay standing if they did it for the links. If they did it for the links they're winning. If they did it for the Pokemon Go accident lawyer Nebraska, you don't get it, right? <laughs> All right. Hype um, builds links, no question. I mean, right now it's yeah. Web 3.0 and Metaverse links. Metaverse. Should we be in the Metaverse, Key? Should we drop everything? You, you the are the, I not. I have actually, I'll tell you, I've never been in the Metaverse. You are the authority on Metaverse at oh, Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Wow. Because you um, went to a conference in the Metaverse, didn't you? I did. I did a, a it what turned into a very awkward conference in the metaverse where you had your own avatar. And I remember literally like this, it's it's almost a um, satire of itself. I had to virtually find the virtual help desk to find where my virtual room was so I could virtually give a give a talk. It was b- bananas. Um, I don't think I'm entering the metaverse until it's like the movie Surrogates, which, by the way, was a terrible film. But until it's like seamless where I can't tell the difference, like it's like Matrix level. That's when I'll go in. Well, I had much better hair in the metaverse. Let's leave it at that. So <laughs> you, I was um, going to ask you if you you upped your uh, avatar. I was game. taller, you know, just a little buffer, <laughs> uh, much better nice. hair. Um, well, maybe I'll maybe I'll try this thing out. <laughs> you don't need better hair, dude. This is why I like doing well, a podcast with you because next to you, my hair looks. You look. You got the like kind of marble Greek god hair thing going on. Ha. Uh, so, I guess thanks, maybe. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it, you, you, you should you should be doing you should be doing you should be doing more of this on video. I should I should stick to podcasts. Um, so from from each of us, a prediction for the next new new thing, Guy. What do you think the next new new thing is? Uh, sadly, I think it's well, not sadly. I don't. I think it's going back to basics. I think the the new new thing is like really focusing on local like not local seo but like getting back out in your community um you know we just came off covid i think there was some erosion of that uh as a focus you know everybody's on zoom but um you know it goes back to the point about the shininess like yeah the the, there's also there's always going to be a new app there's always going to be a new way to communicate to connect to share to engage but um you know 
the new new thing for uh, local lawyers that serve a local community. Um, it's going to be getting back to that. It's going to and now that is that going to happen just in real life? No, it's going to happen on all these new shiny platforms. Yeah. Um, but if you ask me, like, what's new new? It's like I don't know. I go. I think about that Seth Godin uh, post on clusters. Uh, we'll post that again too. But that's what's changing. There's there's literally so much bombardment of media that we're going to go back to filtering a lot of it out, getting connected local. You know, I think about this even in a lot of the groups that I'm on. Like, I don't, I'm not on the wild uh, Facebook. Like, I'm in a private group, you know, it's or, or I'm in a group of people that share affinity interests as I do. Um, I think the more, you know, it's, it's, the, it's like masterminding online, that kind of stuff. I don't know. Is that so, new? I don't know if it's new. Um, it's going to be help, I, more helpful content because of Google. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the new new thing is helpful content. You heard it <laughs> first on Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. There's always going to um, be a new thing. You know, I don't know. What's new right now? Metaverse I, is new. That's what's new. I think my take on the new new thing is an adjustment of the business model of legal. Um, I, and, I, and, I, and that is going to happen. It may happen faster in some states than others, but I think it's very valuable. You know, we spend a lot of time, I spend a lot of time with lawyers talking to lawyers, and, and I think it would be very helpful for the legal community to, I, you know, I got a request for, a, for a, a coach, a business coach the other day. This is from someone I went to, to, to grad school with at Michigan. Um, she is a wealth management person. She worked with some white shoe attorneys and she asked me for a uh, a business coach for them. And the the interesting thing for me here was I told her that she should really get someone who's very experienced in legal. Um, and I'm going to reverse that conversation when I'm talking about the new new thing. I think it's very important for the legal industry to stop talking to lawyers all the time. Look outside the way things are delivered. Look look differently. Look I mean Look at the way Amazon delivers services. Look at the way that other industries are doing an amazing job of creating a different uh, experience. Like, there's so much out there, and the way we deliver the legal service is going to be fundamentally different. Um, well, and if you have to stay in legal, go look at Hello Divorce and look at how they've looked outside the legal industry to think about how we deliver family law services in a fundamentally different manner. Go there, right? And then think about how that applies to your immigration practice or your criminal defense practice. All right. It's time to have another ad break. When we come back, we have got a review coming us to Apple Podcasts, and we're going to talk about the new, 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 new thing, Google out-of-home ads coming to you direct out of Mountain View. As you may know, if you're a regular listener to Lunch Hour Legal Marketing, we are so grateful to the people who listen to us and those that leave reviews. Valuable tips, five stars. Guy and Conrad know their stuff. They don't hold back. Listening to this podcast will help you grow your practice. Uh, I think that's Josh Barron. Barron Josh is the user, but if it's Josh Barron, thank you, Josh, the Apple Podcast. Uh, if you do like us, hate us, or are indifferent... <laughs> do leave us a review. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel, uh, check that out. There's some cool outtakes and whatnot, other silliness. And then um, if you've got feedback, if you've got topics you'd like us to cover, if you've got questions, hit us up, hashtag LHLM on all of the various social medias. You can also feel free to message us. We're fairly friendly, um, but we do appreciate it. And with that, we're always friendly. We're always friendly. Well, I am. I mean, you know, sometimes. No, we've got you riled up recently. Wait, this, well, by the way, get... this true story. We had to get Guy to turn his gain down, which drops the volume that gets recorded because he got so animated talking about um, Google during our. That's actually our, a lunch our... hour legal marketing first, I believe. You usually <laughs> have to turn it up. Yeah, <laughs> I think maybe I don't know. All right. Speaking of shiny objects, as we were, Google is coming off the screen and coming into the real world with out-of-home ads delivered through Google Display. So, Conrad, you know, that sounds pretty fancy. Can you explain what the heck this is? Yeah. So, um, 
It is unfortunately, I can't believe they called it this. And I think it's Google who's named this. It's called Digital Out of Home Inventory. The acronym is DUH, right? So <laughs> I don't know if someone was being really clever at Google or 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 really clueless, but um, it's called or it's DUH. DUH! DUH! It's the, uh, the Simpsons version of digital marketing. Um, so the, the out-of-home digital marketing is basically the ability to buy digital billboards uh, through the Google interface. It is fundamentally a consolidation of existing networks. So you were able to do this before. We've, we have done this on occasion from our, for our clients, um, not, not through Google, but through, directly through some of the networks. So it's a consolidation of, I believe, eight existing uh, networks. And it's, it's fascinating to me for the legal industry because this is very much built around branding, right? And so the, 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 the metrics that they talk about when they talk about the success of these programs uh, are very much around brand awareness and brand consideration. These are not things that Guy and I typically talk about, but if you are a large offline brand uh, advertiser, this may be something to consider. The cool thing, because it's digital, is twofold. Uh, it's very easy to in real time adjust, right? So you can turn things on, you can turn them off. And there's two levels of targeting that I think become helpful for the right law firm. The first is geolocation. So you can be very, very specific about where your ads appear in what area. So you could think about uh, at the tackiest of levels, putting your uh, advertising around digital advertising billboards around hospitals if you're a personal injury lawyer, right? Um, and so that is something that is the targeting becomes very interesting on that. The second targeting that I think is for the right, again, you have to think about how this applies to your specific practice area. For the right practice area is interesting is what, what, what's known as day parting. Day parting is the process of saying, I want this to show up during these specific days of the week or these specific times of day. So um, uh, you could, for example, if you are, I'm going to just do this off the cuff, if you're a criminal defense attorney, you could make sure your ads show up uh, over the weekends or during, like if you do DUI, for example, heavily showing up uh, during St. Patrick's Day and New Year's Eve instead of buying a a physical display ad that you pay for over the entire month, right? And so um, it's interesting. To me, Guy, the one caveat on all of this is the overall objective, which is brand awareness and brand consideration. Branding and legal, super, super hard. Outside of PI, we see very, very limited amount of branding exercises. And so to me, the first question that comes about here is, are you engaged in building brand? And if that's not part of what you're doing, this may this, this, this is probably something that you should just frankly stop listening to the pod and go listen to something else right now. Or am I wrong, Keith? What do you think? A um, lot, lot to unpack there. Uh, I think this, you know, I talk about something new and shiny, and even though it's not totally new, I think it's a glimpse. I mean, we've all seen the movies, right? Everything's covered in digital billboards everywhere you look. Uh, you know, right now, we stare down at our phones, um, but as there, it, with advancements in uh, AR and VR and metaverse and all this stuff, this is what this is what it's going to look like, folks you're going to see there's going to be digital billboards. You're going to have digital billboards in your Uber. You're going to have digital billboards in, well, in your own self-driving car. Um, you know, These heated I'm, seats brought to you by a digital billboard. Yeah, you know, I'm being a little bit facetious here, but this is what, this is the, uh, this is where people want to take this is to be able to say, look, you can manage across all of these different place they're already doing this there's they're making it easier to do it in real life and i think that you're we're going to see uh a growth of this and you know this is also you know seems silly but uh metaverse is going to have ads in it folks and those ads you know it's going to be the same type of thing and so to counter its point though about branding yes uh this is not a direct response uh play here but i you know one thing you said there that kind of surprised me i, I see a lot of branding going on in legal no been pi i mean how many different animals no, no, and tools pi 100 percent. pi 100 percent. Yeah. Uh, 100 okay. but and i've I think seen that it is... more in some of the other categories 
Um, but I, I would say it's not uh, prominent. I think you're right that it most, you know, most, law, you know, most estate planning lawyers, there's no brand position. You know, I'm a estate planning yeah. lawyer, right? I think that's true. Yeah. And I would encourage if that, if you're one that kind of lawyer, like you don't have a brand, I would encourage you to revisit it. I don't know that you're going to come up with a brand position. I don't know that um, you, you know, there's some kind of like, you know, catchy motto slogan for what you do or or that's just not your style but i would at least tell you to do the exercise do the branding exercise think because it will laser focus even beyond just your brand positioning it'll laser focus where you dedicate resources and so i want to i want to a couple things one there's a fundamental split between brand awareness and brand positioning so brand awareness is like unaided i know who this is positioning is like we are the um, I, 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 I uh, the easiest one is with, with, with family and divorce. Like I am the men's divorce firm, right? So you're talking about like, like the, the, the market that you serve or why you do it or, or, or who you are and what makes that different. I'm the, I'm the local guy. I'm the, uh, I fight for men, I, whatever it might be. Um, and, and I think that second, um, thing is super, super important. Like understanding your position and, and, and Guy and I've talked about this ad nauseum. Your positioning is not a gavel and leather bound books, right? And, and columns, right? It's not even you have a JD, right? Everyone, every lawyer has a JD. Merry Christmas. Good for you. It doesn't matter. Um, so I think that's a really good thing. Um, the interesting, the, the, the other nuance to this, um, with Google that I think is important to understand before, and I didn't cover this when I was giving the description about it. And I think it's important is these ads are not personalized, right? So they are not like, Oh, I know Guy was on my website or I know Guy was shopping for, um, an X, Y, or Z, a Ford. And so now I'm going to show him a Chevy. They're not personalized, but they're contextually relevant based on location and time of day, which is where that geotargeting and day parting uh, comes in. Um, but you know, the, it will be interesting to see how lawyers spill their TV. I mean, this is this is a this is a grab from Google to take your offline display, TV, billboards, radio, etc. And push those funds into Google by doing it very by by offering a very very comprehensive reach as well as the ability to have a very very programmatically relevant um, and 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 you could tune those ads based on 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 time of day or, or things that are going on. So think about Camp Lejeune, right? So that that has become a big thing. Everyone's kind of spending money on this all of a sudden. That's going to die down in two months or, or, or it may have already died down. Um, but it gives you that flexibility to adjust with the times. And I think that will be fascinating to see how that works. And you, you know, uh, you made me think about this. Be- you will be able to target on a bunch of other things beyond just time of day and location because they know a lot more so you know when you go and if you ever try to go buy like out outdoor uh, media, you know they'll say things like you know this many cars go past the you know right. billboard and that you know, that's that's your impressions right. But Google's going to be able to do a lot more to talk about like where this here's what we know about the people that are approximately located to this particular <laughs> <Right>. sign. <laughs> right. Right. So at, it's, at, so so it's yeah. not it's not exactly custom audience like that, but you're going to get some very interesting affinity data to be able to place bits. Yep. Um, and then the other thing that you said, I, was, I know we're running out of time here, but I think it's so important on the uh, awareness versus positioning. If you're not doing positioning, don't waste your time with awareness. <laughs> right. That's you know what? That actually might be the, the we should we should put that at the beginning or maybe we do a whole session on this. But but that's really really a great piece of advice because otherwise you are basically marketing your category which is legal, which is pretty big and includes every single person that you compete with because you're just another JD, right? And you're not marketing yourself, you're marketing your category. Thank Great you advice, Guy. We, we hold the best stuff marketing. for last. If you'd like more information about well, you and with that, today, speaking of last, visit. it's over. Uh, thank you so much Subscribe for joining us for this episode of Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. Uh, if you just landed here, please do subscribe, and we'd love to hear from you. Hashtag LHLM uh, across the socials. Please reach out. Uh, Lee, drop us a review. And until next time, Ian Conrad, Lunch Hour Legal Marketing. We're out of here.
The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, or subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.